Hello everybody, it's me Evan from On The Girl Sports and today I'm coming to you to talk about some of my spring training predictions and overviews and how I think uh, players are going to perform this spring and just in general just talk about what my feelings are going into spring training with FanFest being this weekend. Um, I guess now is the best time to sort of air out my thoughts on that. Um, so to start off, I will not be attending FanFest this weekend, unfortunately, since I am currently attending college, so sad, but um, I'll certainly be looking at highlights of it uh, because any Astros content we can get this time of year is, is good content because obviously in January, um, any baseball content, it's pretty barren. So unfortunately, I can't go, but however, I do have plans, if these plans do work out, to attend spring training games in Arizona with my brother. Um, I think in March when I have time off for my break, so that should be fun. I'm looking forward to that. Um, won't be seeing the Astros there since they're based in uh, Palm Springs, Florida, but I can still check out some of the um, National League teams like the Cubs and um, other teams like that, so that should be interesting. Um, so to get started, I'd like to give you guys some of my spring training predictions for this year, who I think is going to be um, added to the Major League roster after, the, um, after spring training. Um, who might be cut, um, some players to look out for, and more. So first off, I'm going to start off with Corey Lee. Now obviously we saw a bit of Corey last year up in the major leagues. He was one of those September call-ups along with a few other guys like Hunter Brown. And you know we didn't get to see too much of him, but what we did see of him is obviously a very young player who wasn't really ready to see the major leagues yet. Um, I think he was putting up below average offensive numbers. Um, when he came up, obviously that has to be expected for somebody who doesn't really have that much major league experience and has only played a bit of his uh, career in AAA. But I'd like to see Corey Lee make a bit of a progression this year in spring training. Um, he's always had potential to be a very good bat, and um, he's had problems defensively, let's just say that. He hasn't been the best defensive catcher. Um, if you look at some of his uh, defensive statistics, he's not very um, eye-popping by any means. But offensively, he has a lot of potential to be a guy that can provide you a lot of pop. And I think he could be a good guy to uh, sort of be like Maldonado's, um, you know, uh, how do I say this, uh, apprentice this year uh, for somebody who's going to be taking on the catch role once Martin Maldonado eventually does leave, if he ever does, that is. Um, so, yes, look out for Corey Lee this year. I think that he's going to have a big spring. I feel like you're going to see him hit the ball very hard and make a jump not only defensively this year, but offensively. So look out for Corey Lee. Second guy I have this year is Jake Myers. Obviously, Jake Myers, we know a lot about Jake Myers. Often, he was super injured last year, um, never could really get it going offensively. People wanted him DFA'd um, during September, which I thought was kind of too far. I mean, Jake Myers, he's still a kid. He hasn't really had that much major league experience yet. And you can't put too, you can't be too hard on him, especially after just coming off of injury. But now this year he's finally going to be healthy, and we get to see that bit of potential we saw from him in late 2021, which I'm really excited about. I'm I'm really excited about Jake Myers, and I think he's going to do good things for our team this year if he stays healthy. That is, um, player number three, uh, Ro what's his name? Ronel Blanco. Ronel Blanco. He was um he's one of our uh, AAA pitchers. Uh, he pitched in relief multiple times last spring, and he put up some really good numbers, I think. Um, um, if I can, I'll display them right here on, this, on the screen later. But he was pretty solid last spring. Um, from what I understood during Winter Leagues, he appeared in like 33 straight appearances without allowing a run, um, which is really impressive. Uh, but Ronald Blanco, I mean, I've seen him pitch on TV before, and that dude looks like he has electric stuff, good slider, good fastball. Uh, looks like he could be like an Anoli Paredes part two, except hopefully without the walks. Um, but also look out for him. He could be potentially another piece that we add to this bullpen this year. Uh, another guy that we could develop into becoming another effective guy in the bullpen like we did with Brian Abreu, who had a breakout season last year and also was spectacular in the postseason. So yes, look out for Ronel Blanco because I feel like he's very likely to be added to the Major League roster by the end of the spring training. Uh, I just feel like his stuff is way too good for us not to do that and he could be yet another part of our already dominant bullpen. Um, I'm trying to think, do I have any other players that I want to look out for this spring? Um, I guess the only other guy that I really want to give a shout out to is Hunter Brown. Um, I think Hunter Brown is going to do amazing things this year. He's obviously going to get uh, full starting time this year. 
Um, I, at least hopefully he's going to be pitching out of the rotation full time. Um, and I'm so excited. He was fantastic last year in AAA. I think he he won the I think he won the award for uh, uh, the best pitcher of the AAA league that he's in uh, last year. And I mean his stuff is just so good. 100 mile an hour fastball, mid 90s slider, good curveball. He's going to be electric at the major league level once he starts get, getting going. And he looked good last year, and he was solid in the postseason. So I have a lot of high hopes for him once he starts uh, pitching full-time out of the right rotation and obviously gets more innings off his plate and just starts to develop more as a major league pitcher. Um, so one guy that I'm looking out for in more of a negative manner this year is Chaz McCormick. And I know this is going to shock a lot of people because, like, how could you say something negative about Chaz McCormick? I know. But hear me out for just one second. Um, so Chaz McCormick, at the moment, will be our starting center fielder. Now, going into this offseason, I kind of wanted us to go out and be more aggressive in the free agent market. You know, maybe get somebody like Bellinger on cheap or somebody like that that we could put in center field that could give us a bit better of a bat than Chaz McCormick. And I'll just say this. Um, you know, Chaz McCormick, he's really good, obviously, hitting opposite field home runs. But, like, if, like, he loses that, that bit of his playing then his bat is really going to start to decline, which is why I want to see Chaz either, one, get on base more this year, or two, uh, start to learn to pull the ball again, because he really was not pulling the ball last year at all. He was, I think, I think at least 11 of his 14 home runs last year were to the opposite field. Um, but, yeah, I'm a bit concerned about Chaz. Hopefully he proves me wrong, but, you know, if we start to see Chaz uh, regress at all, like, I'd rather see us like give Jake Myers some playing time if he's healthy, or maybe call up Pedro Leon. Um, speaking of Pedro Leon, um, he's actually the last player that I want to talk about for spring training. Uh, Pedro Leon, he's been in the farm for a while now. He had a decent year in AAA last year. I fin I think he finished with an OPS above 800, had over 20 home runs. Um, he's got great speed, good glove, and he can hit the ball a thousand miles. And I'm really excited to see if he progresses at all in AAA this year to the point where we'll be able to call him up because yeah, he's got the power, but I think he needs to work on, uh, on base a bit more, uh, maybe hit for average a bit more. Um, he does strike out quite a lot, but Hey, if he's hitting home runs, I think honestly, that's more important than being a guy who just gets slap hits because let's face it, average isn't really that important anymore, but it would just be nice to see him start developing, um, uh, his batting skills a bit more. I think he's already got the glove figured out pretty well. I think he had a positive DRS in AAA last year, um, if I can recall. So he is, he is, uh, he could be a full package for us if he develops well. Um, some players that aren't prospects that I want to look out for, besides Chaz McCormick, obviously this spring. Um, Michael Brantley. Michael Brantley is going to be returning on a one-year contract this year after sustaining a knee injury that took him out for the rest. Actually, no. It was a shoulder injury that took him out for the rest of the for the entirety of the season. He sustained it during about mid in the midsummer time of the season, and we missed him for the rest of the year. Won the World Series at him, but he did not get to play on our playoff roster, which was sad. But he's going to be coming back, and I feel like a lot of people are not really under are really underrating Brantley this year. Brantley, I feel like is going to be a monster. Um, if he's fully healthy, we could see him returning to his old self. Um, batting above 300, contending for the AL batting title, I believe. You know, getting us at least 10 homers. He's not that big of a power guy, but just being a good guy that hits you 300 and gets on base for guys to knock him in every day. So I'm really excited to see Michael Brantley perform, and I think a lot of people have kind of forgotten about him because he was injured. A lot of people who are looking at our Astros team currently in our lineup are kind of underrating Brantley. So look out for Brantley to have another great season. The final player that I want to talk about for this video is obviously the newly acquired first baseman for the Houston Astros, Jose Abreu, who stayed with the White Sox for most of his career after becoming a free agent this year, signing with us. <clears throat> I am so excited to watch this dude play for us. I mean, I've seen him a lot play. I've seen him play in Chicago for a while. Um, obviously not in person, but uh, from the TV screen, this dude looks, look, looks like an absolute monster at the plate. Um He'll hit, he'll hit average for you. He'll get on base. He's got some good pop in the bat. Sure, his home runs might have been down last year. He only had 15, but he had uh, he had one of the best OPSs in his career, OPS plus um, on base percentages, and he was walking more. He was still hitting a lot of doubles, um, and he hit, um, he hit 300. So I'm just so excited to see what this dude does with the Crawford boxes because everybody knows that a good guy with a good pull swing 
can go silly with those things. Um, so I'm really excited to see what he can do for us and watch for him to have a monster spring. I feel like he's going to be slugging the crap out of the ball and we're going to get to see just how um, much of a full impact player he could be for this team. Um, so yeah, that's about it for my spring training predictions. Um, if you guys want to leave some thoughts on what you think this team's going to do or some players are going to um, perform this spring, let me know down in the comments. Also, feel free to subscribe, share this video to your friends. Uh, this channel's still pretty relatively small, so I'm trying to grow it out a bit more, so feel free to share it. Um, so yeah, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.